Hello! Right, today I'm going through um, some more of my winter preparation items and I thought I would show you the lighting system that um, I would employ if I didn't have uh, battery operated torches or lanterns to hand. Um, now when I was a child we lived off grid for a little while while the house was being restored um, and so I do have several years of practical use of oil lamps and also um, using oil lamps that belonged to the family have been in the family for now three or four generations um, this isn't one of them. Uh, I haven't shown the other one, the, the family one yet, because uh, I want to do that, show that in a different, slightly different video. But this is actually one of the oil lamps that we did use when I was a child. The um, there are a few basic rules to remember when using oil lamps. Of course, the first is always safety when naked flames are around. And so a nice flat surface is always a must. The other thing that um, people perhaps don't know is to light the wick. I I'm not filling this with oil yet because oil evaporates so it's a waste unless you're using it all the time but you want to lower the wick as low as possible to light your oil lamp to start with and then gradually increase the size of the wick. Now this serves until you get the height you desire. Now this serves two purposes. Well three purposes really. One, it's actually easier to put the glass on when the flame is low. Two, it allows the glass to heat up slowly and three, it reduces the risk of soot build up on the glass. Now the reason you want the glass to heat up slowly, it's the same principle as um, washing glasses in hot water and then plunging them in cold water or vice versa um, it will crack and for and my other piece of safety advice uh, I learnt from someone who grew up with oil lamps um, when and she would have been a she would have been using them in the early part of the 1900s um, and uh, her other advice was never put oil lamps where two different heat sources meet. So, say for example, on a windowsill where you might have hot air from the room on one side of the lamp, but cold air from the window on the other side of the lamp. And again, it can cause not just the glass to crack, but actually explode. Um, I have witnessed that happening. Um, and when we went into town, we asked the woman that we knew had used oil lamps as a child. And she said, oh, yes, it used to be a common problem when she was a child. So be aware that hot and cold do not mix where oil lamps are concerned. Now, obviously, hurricane lamps are designed slightly differently. They tend to have slightly thicker glass, slightly more robust build, and they were used outside as well as inside. Plus, they weren't standing, generally standing, for any length of time with a different, you know, it takes a while for this to happen. Um, so... These are generally either in cold or inside. They're either so where it's warmer. They're generally not in an area where the two meet. 
So those are my tips, my basic tips for using oil lamps. Like I said, hurricane lamps are superb for using outdoors if you need to. Um, and again, the basic principle of light the wick on the lowest setting possible and then gradually increase the height of the wick till you get the desired flame. Try and avoid turning it up too soon um, so that the heat uh, allows the glass to regulate itself and also not um, to reduce the risk of sooting up from excess smoke. Um, now, the other obvious light is the one that's been sat here chuntering away to itself is candles. And again, with candles, make sure you have a good solid base. This is actually an old candle holder and I just used it to for, for this particular candle. So you want a good solid base. Never leave uh, any of these unattended. Um, and again, make sure it's on a flat surface. If you've got animals like cats that could knock something over, try to remember to put things up high. Now, the other way that you can maximise the light from these light sources is, can you see the reflection here from the candle? Put something behind your lit item and it will help reflect light and indeed the small amount of heat that these will produce back towards you or towards the room. This is why um, in older photographs you will quite often see lights, lamps or, uh, or um, candles placed in front of mirrors. Uh, say on a fireplace mantle, you'll quite often see a mirror above the fireplace mantle. And this is because mirrors make a very good reflective surface. So you're actually increasing the amount of light that you're getting from the product that you're using. Now, um, you can use anything as a reflective, that you know, anything that's reflective can be used as a reflective surface. So you could use kitchen foil. You could use the um, something like a uh, metal tin, so something like this. And if you cut it with tin snips and straightened it out, it would make a reflective sur surface, or cut a you know cut a cut a circle out of it. Um, Here's another example of a tin that you could use. The inside of that tin, as you can see, it's reflecting the, even the light from the from the camera. So um, again, cut this tin down here, open it out, stick it behind your light source, and you have an immediate help. You have immediate help reflecting the amount of light being used and again if you're planning on going this route with light sources for power cuts or whatever or living off grid um, these are just examples of matches lighter And just, I think most people have these for barbecue lighters or a, a gas stove lighter. Um, these are useful because you can get down into, you know, you can actually get into uh, little nooks and crannies quite easily. So I actually do quite like these types of lighters to light something like the hurricane lamp or 
candles that might have burnt down in 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 their container you can also get uh, long uh, long matches as well um they used to be prevalent when i was a child people used to use them for lighting fires and whatnot so those are the three items that i would use outside of torches or battery lanterns uh, or solar lights um, if there was a power cut in the winter or even during late summer um, it, these are my secondary items uh, I always prefer to go straight to torches um, especially headlamps if there is a power cut but if there is a prolonged power cut these last a long time when filled or if you've got a, a large candle they they will burn for a long time um, and like I said just remember safety first okay that's it for today I hope I haven't waffled on too much I hope some of the um, knowledge that I've had will help you out if you ever do decide to go this route and if you like the video please consider subscribing giving it a thumbs up and a share that would be uh, an enormous help to me and thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time bye